Good evening. Hello. How y'all are? It's Thursday. Thursday. Thursday night. You know what that means, Bobby? It means it's time for the landing. Absolutely right. That's what we know is every Thursday night it's landing time. Yep. So, you excited? Super excited. You stoked up? I'm stoked. You fired up? I'm fired up. All right. We're, we're talking about Jesus today. Jesus. It's cool. It's always a good reason to be excited. What is today's lesson? By, by the way, lesson... By the way, what, what number are we on? We are on lesson 25. You mean to tell me we've had 25 lessons? We've had 25 lessons. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. So let's get cracking into it. Yeah, lesson 25 is Confess Part 2. Confess Part 2. Yep. So if you didn't get enough the first time, you get to do it again. <laughs> do you want to read our principle 4 in scriptural truth? Sure. Openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart. Matthew 5 and 8. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you joined this last video, but uh, we talked about confessing. We did. Confession and yeah, I, I suggest you go back and look at that. It was a pretty good one. So and we're going to continue on with that theme. Yep. Um, Bobby, would you read John chapter 13, 1 through 8? And I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from forth from God and was going back to God, go up from supper, got up from supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter and said, he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash, your, wash you, you have no part with me. Feet washing? Feet washing. Why do you think washing someone's feet was such a big deal in Jesus' day? Well, back in the day, you know, when people were going to and fro, they didn't have, you know, Dodge Journeys and F-150s and, and Cummins or nothing like that. So they had on what they called Jerusalem cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they wore flip-flops and sandals? Yeah. Jer Jer Jerusalem <laughs> cruisers. So, you know, their feet got filthy. Mm -hmm. Dirty and dusty and whatever else was on the trail. You know, you can look at your tennis shoes and just think, you know, they didn't have no Nikes. And they had no Danners. That's my preferred shoe choice. But they didn't have no Danners, so they had open-toed shoes. Cold, hot, didn't matter. So when you come in, you get your shoes off. And the... Uh, the washing of each other's feet. Well, and what Jesus was showing them that that one day I will cleanse you mm. of your sin. You know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. you're dirty. That's why he told Peter. He said, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter, because <coughs> he was soon to be crucified, mm -hmm. and so he was cleansing, but. But the part I like says, uh, Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your, wash you, you have no part with me. So unless Jesus has washed you clean. You don't have any part in him. That's, but they didn't understand that then. But it, it, it represented so many things that Jesus was a servant. Mm -hmm. He was saying, I come to serve you. I come to cleanse you. You know what I mean? And. I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't like people touching my feet. No, it's, it's, it's a little odd. Pretty much you were a doctor, so would you, yep. would you say that was 
not intimacy on a level like we characterize it now, but but a close love. If you've done that, yes. Huh. Yes, I have. So he was representing a lot of things right there. He so. was. Well, the washing of the feet was usually reserved for like the lowest servant mm -hmm. in the house. That's right. Yeah, because it was a gross job. It was a nasty job. Nobody wanted to do it. So the low man on the totem pole was the one that had to do it. They had totem poles. Yeah, right? they did. It's like we got company, Jeebs. You got to go wash their feet. Yeah, Jeebs. <laughs> Benson. And what Jesus is showing us is that even though he is the greatest of the great, the highest king, the name above all names, he lowered himself to that of servant for us, to show us that he is cleaning us. It's like a representation where he was living in heavenly places. He was up there with the Father, mm -hmm. and he come down to be born a woman. He wasn't born in a, in a, in a castle or a, or a, you know big to do or a rich family okay. so it's another representation <laughs> uh well why do you think peter didn't want jesus to wash his feet he well, kind of I mean, put up a put up a fight about it because he esteemed jesus he knew that he was the messiah he's like you're the son of god don't, don't wash my feet i should wash your feet you know what i mean if that's the way i would think wouldn't you I'm, well what are you doing i should be washing your feet you've come to deliver us you're the Messiah. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, why would you wash my feet? It's it's almost just unheard of. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I mean, it would be for me, wouldn't it, you? It would. Our lesson says that Jesus knew Peter was dirty. He knows our dirt too. All of it. And like Peter, we are ashamed to let others see it, including Jesus. Mm -hmm. But this is the truth. You can't hide anything from Christ. That's right. And unless you let him deal with it, your relationships with him and with others will suffer. That's truth. That's part of that. Uh, He's come to cleanse you. Yes. And there's no, and I think we got to always remember, there's nothing that you've done. Nothing that you've done at all. I don't care as bad as you can think. There's nothing you've done that God can't cleanse you from, that Jesus can't cleanse you from. And and we we look and try to, to grade sin sometimes. You know, we look at the Ten Commandments and we mm -hmm. think that's the rated by severity one through ten. <laughs> I mean, right? You right. Know, well, I just did, I lied. It ain't like I killed somebody. You committed one, you've committed them all pretty much, you know. And that's the way he looks at it because sin is sin. Mm -hmm. and, and he's come to cleanse and there's nothing you've done that he can't see. What is it? There's nothing too dirty. That he can't make worthy. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. so. And besides, Scripture tells us that all have fallen short of the glory of God. Every, every, every one single of us. one right. of us. We were born into this world, mm -hmm. centered, right? Well, it says, the Bible tells us if we confess our dirt, God will forgive us and cleanse us from it all. In the name of Jesus, and because of his sacrifice on the cross, you are forgiven and you are clean. I'm forgiven? You're forgiven. And I'm clean. And you're clean. So I don't need to walk around guilty all the time, right? Right. Because I put been, your trust in Jesus Christ. I do. Do you believe that he died on the cross Most for you? Most certainly. Then you're cleansed. I've accepted him. So you mean tell me that I don't have to go ride the pew to heaven? No. Well, ain't that something? Well, there's a lot of freedom in that. There is a lot of freedom in that. Huh. I want you to think about that. You know, a lot of folks sometimes get it twisted that stump my toe you know where sin abounds grace does much more abound mm -hmm. you know he loves you so much more than sitting there his, his word says that his, he holds no records long, wrong perfect love yeah and he casts our sin as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more to be remembered no more so yeah. a, a God that sent his son and a son that loved you so much to do that it's not like he's sitting up there with this pencil in the book of life going, erase it, they did that. Oh, no, oh, oh, put it back in. He said he was sorry. Erase it. You messed up. Nope, nope, nope. Go ahead. He, go, he ain't wearing a hole in a page with an eraser writing and erasing. No. You're bought and paid for. You're his. Mm -hmm. so, anyway. <laughs> well, Just trying to get that clear. You know what I mean? Because there's so many people that, that represent it sometimes that just it's so fickle and it's riding on a razor's edge and 
and and man, you just can't be good enough. You can't. None of us can, but Jesus is, and Jesus in us is good enough. That's right. You know, we it's not by in, it's not by works lest any man should boast. I'm gonna get to preaching. You got to calm me down here a little bit. I know we got a certain amount of time, but but I've just discovered some of this here recently. You know, and. Mm-hmm. And it's not by works, so we can't be good enough walking around being good enough. And it's not by our accolades, it's by one thing alone. You know what that is? It's the blood of Jesus and his grace. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, it asks us, what do you think it would be like to wash someone else's feet or to have your feet washed? Well, I've experienced both. Mm -hmm. Humbling. Very humbling for me. I mean, and... I tell you what it did for me. It did something that I, I never would have realized, but I, I started washing several men's feet, but got some friends too, but I washed their feet and I thought, this is going to be awkward. But you know, it wasn't. What it was was so humbling that I, I, I broke down and, and I was sobbing, washing their feet at the thought of getting to be a servant, mm-hmm. at getting to show them what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Being a representation of what what he was doing and it humbled me too because it made me feel love for them truly made me feel love for them yep. well jesus tells us to do this and other than the the physical act of you know cleaning each other's feet it's symbolic of us forgiving one another mm-hmm. as christ forgave us so when someone has wronged you it's like they they have dirt all over them and what you can do is you can forgive them. You can wash their feet. That's right. And that both that sets them free and it sets you free too. Come on with it. Yeah. Come on with it. So let's get to washing feet. That's right. But I'm going to tell you right now, unforgiveness is a spiritual cancer. Yes, it is. It will eat you alive. And and the forgiveness, you know, we... First of all, the Lord tells us to, but the reason he tells us to is because spiritually it will rot you from the inside out. And, man, just don't let that have any power over you. If there's somebody that's that's uh, causing you grief that you just can't get past, you need to you need to get past. You need to build a big old bridge and get on over it. And don't get it mistaken. Forgiving someone isn't saying that what they did to you is okay no. or that you accept it. It's setting it's freeing yourself and freeing them from the sin that they've committed against you. It's not saying that. That I agree with what you've done and saying I'm not going to carry that with me anymore. And it's not saying you have to subject yourself to that same thing no. over and over again. It's just no. saying I'm not giving it power over me to dictate how I feel uh, about you anymore. I forgive you. It's good. We're good. You are good. You know what I mean? So, well, Bobby, we, we're, we're the closest to 11 minutes we ever have been. In a long time, yeah. We tried to do 11 minutes, and we're real close at 23. For some reason, it's the magic number. I know. She has to, I think she's going to have to get a little bell, or going to have to hold my hand while we do this and give me the henna squeeze. Well, if you look right down here, it mm-hmm. says we've been on for 13 minutes yeah, and 34. Okay. That's how I know the mother's at 23. <laughs> I don't pat no mind when I get to rolling. <laughs> All right. All well, right. it's been great having y'all, and... Uh, Hope we've given you something that that touched your spirit, maybe something to equip you. But we're going to read the serenity prayer with you and bid you adieu. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did, this sinful world is as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. It was a good lesson. It was a good lesson. I enjoyed it. You're pretty sharp. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I am pretty biased. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see y'all next time. What? Did you have something to say? Yeah, I was going to say next week is lesson 26. And it's going to be over admitting. Admitting.
confessing and admitting. They're different things. Well, in hillbilly world like where I'm from, that's the same thing. It'll be different. Okay. So join us next week. Till next week. Bye. Tune in.